One Thing by One Direction. This is a really cool song because the timing, the rhythm changes the whole way through. Now on your PDF, you'll notice that at the top, it looks quite busier than normal. You'll see it goes D, A, D, D, A, G, G, A, B minor, and it's got a strumming pattern, etc, etc. What it should sound like if you were to play it along with the backtrack that I sent you is something like this. And I'm going to play the verse through twice. The first time is just the guitar going and the second time on repetition you'll notice there's a drum kicking into the doof 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 in the background so it's going to sound like this And then everything's going to change. Now I first want to break down the verse to get the verse working. And we're going to start by looking at the bassy chords. Now, if you're sort of new guitar, new to guitar, this is still a nice song to get going because it's not too fast, not too slow, and the chords are all very important chords to learn as well. This is our D. If you're new to the chord shapes, just quickly, first finger, second finger, third finger. First and second in the second fret, third finger goes to third fret, string two. If you're not too sure on the chord diagrams, drop me a WhatsApp and I'll send you a more in-depth explanation on how to play the chords. A should look like this. You can see the fingers nice and clear. Fingers one, two, and three in a row from string four, three, and two, all in the second fret. And some guitarists like swapping fingers one and two around like that. So it's a little bit different. This is my personal preference, so I like it like that. And the nice changes over here, D, a, D, you'll notice my first finger didn't move. But some players still prefer to do it the other. I'm happy with either. Now, later you're going to go to a G. G looks like this. Again, like I said as well, if you're not sure how to play the chords, rather drop me a WhatsApp and I'll explain in detail. And some guitarists like using fingers 3 and 4 at the bottom for G. Also fine. And if you're a newbie to guitar and you really want to play this, we can live with easy G2. Just stay with the bottom four strings. And then lastly, later, we're going to kick in a B minor, which look, looks like that. And you may do an easy B minor like this. And if you're an intermediate player, I'd like you to try the bar chord, which is finger one flat across all six in fret two. Finger two on the second string of the third fret. And fingers three and four coming in like that. Okay, now I'm going to jump across now to the strumming part. So we're going to focus more now on your strumming hand. Now, the movement over here, very important. If you're strumming on a numbered count, like the one or the two, it will always be a downward strum. If the arrow is under the plus, the and, it will always be an upward strum. So basically what we're doing is we're conditioning the hand into one and two and three and a number always goes down, the plus or the ands always go up. So we're getting your natural rhythm kicking in like that. Now I'm going to play through the first row. It's going to go D, A, D. We're going to start off on the counts of one and two, two strums on the D. You can't see the D right now, focusing on the on the strumming side of it. So one more time. Two, three, four, one and two. Simple as that. Then you change to an A. I have changed up there. You can hear it. Different sound. And on the three and four, you're going to strum down, up, down. Very, very important. Remember to keep the up strokes on the ands, the down strokes on the numbers like the three. Four, for example. I'm going to say that a lot because I really want it to settle in with us. So if you put the D and A together, and I'm going to zoom out a little bit there so you can see the hand changes with it. I've got my D in place. You can see the strumming hand. It's going to go like this. And I'm going to count in. 
One, two, three, four, and one, and two, and three, and four. And then we come back to the D. And you'll notice on the D, again it goes down, up, down. But there's a lot more space between the, the, the arrows there. They're not so close together. They're a bit more wider apart. So your spaces also give us a visual indication for how far apart the strums are, how quick the strum should be. So that last section now, on D is going to go one and two and three and four. Okay, so we're going to take the entire front or top line through now from the beginning of it, and it's going to go like this: one, two, and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Make sure you get that right before you go to the next row. Now the next row is for the second line of the verse. Okay, where he sings, but when I'm looking at you, and that's going to go D, A, G. Just mimicking the chord movement there. D, A, G in the corner. And you're going to have the same rhythm pattern. So D starts off the same. One and two. A is still the same. Three and four. But then you go to G for one and two and three and four. So it's almost the same, but on the second time around, the D is replaced by a G chord. Let's try the first and second lines together now. So we're going to try and sing. I've tried to play it cool, but when I'm looking at you. So D-A-D, second time, D-A-G. Are we ready? One, two, three, four, and one, and two, and three, and 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 four. And the difficult part is holding my breath while counting. <laughs> okay. Third line stays on the G. So now we're not going to start with the D anymore. We're going to start G on the count of one and two. The A is a constant so far, three and four. And then B minor is going to kick in, which is going to go the one and two and three and four. So in essence, to summarize, you've done the same rhythm three times in a row, but each time there's been subtle changes. First D, A, D, Second row, D, A, G. Third row, G, A, B minor. Should we try it together now? Okay. One, two, three, four, and D, D. Three and four, and one, and two, and three, and four. One, and two, and three, and four, and G, and two, and three, and four. One, and two, and three, and four, and B minor, two, and three, and four. And I put an extra strum inside there just because it sounds cool. You can do that if you want to. It's not a must, but you're allowed to. So there's always a little bit of gray space. So if you put something in extra and it sounds cool, do it again. Okay. Now the fourth row. This one's a bit sneaky because the rhythm changes all together. You're back to G. It's going to sound like this. One and two and three and four. So nice wide spaces there. One strum on the count of one for the A. Hold on a bit for the D on the up strum after the two and. So that entire row for G, A, D, which is in red on your PDF file, it's going to count like this. One, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and. One more time. One, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and. Should count three and four, but you got the rhythm pattern under control now. I'm now going to play it the whole way through from the beginning, but I'm not going to count. I'm just going to lead into the count, and then while I'm strumming, I'm not going to do the counting, and I want you to try and play along with and keep up. Also, you will get an audio track of the track that I used for the back track, which I made specially for the study. So I'd like you to practice along with it, maybe send me a video of you jamming with it. That would be pretty cool. But enough talking. Let's play this. One, two, three, four... Again, if you put the bat track on, it's going to sound like this. And again.
part of this song is going to kick in. Now I'm going to go across to the bridge. You'll notice that the chords are still the same, the sequence changes and the strumming pattern changes as well. And it says next to the bridge, bridge strumming. So if I were to play a G chord, we're going to go slow motion, one and two and three and four and, and then you finish the bar and you change to the next chord. So let's just try this. One and two and three and four and. Got that? Now you and I together. One and two and three and four and. One and two and three and four. So it's quite easy. Down, down, up, down, up, down. Then you change to D. Down, down, up, down, up, down. B minor. Down, down, up, down, up, down. So each of those chords gets played through one complete bar until you get to the fourth line where you sing because you've got that one thing. On the B minor, it says stop in blue in brackets. You're going to go one, two, three, four. So it's one quick strum and you silence it with your palm. Palm came in there to keep the guitar quiet. And when he sings, because you've got that one thing, you strum one on the A, D on the thing. One thing. And that's your bridge. Now I'm going to go back a little bit on the back track, so you're going to hear the end of the G, A, D, and then I'm going to join through on the bridge and we'll put it together later. Okay, here we go. One, two, three, bridge. And that's your bridge part of it. So you and I by yourself, if you're not sure, let's go for it. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four, because you've got that one thing. So just sing that last part to yourself and excuse my voice. It's more for the timing and you got it. Now the next video, number two, is going to break down the chorus because lots of cool things happen there. It's quite busy.